Hey guys, Jeremy Jacobus here. If you're new, welcome. If not new, welcome back. It's lovely seeing your beautiful faces. This is all about food adventures all over the world. And if you can't tell already, I'm here in Chicago. I'm here to eat some incredible food of just sort of the best of the best. So no reason for a long spiel. Let's go eat. First stop on my Chicago food tour had to be for some classic Chicago deep dish. And Pequod's is supposed to be the city's best. Pequod's has been serving their take on the classic deep dish for decades, and it's a caramelized crust that makes them stand out in a crowded deep dish field. The pizza begins by pressing their dough into their deep dish pans, and then gets layers and layers of layers of mozzarella. Those layers along the edges is what's gonna give it its special crust. And then they fill it up with their homemade tomato sauce, and it gets some grated Romano and some secret spices. And if you feel like you can handle it, load it up with all the meat and veggies. It cooks for 45 minutes, rest for 15, and it's time for all the cheesy goodness. So I got the pepperoni and sausage, and oh my God, that crust really is so special and makes all the difference. Just absolute heaven with the super crunchy bite of the pizza and all that cheese and all that meat and all that sauce. Oh. Next up is Frontier and their insane fried chicken sandwich from award-winning chef, Brian Jupiter. Frontier's fried chicken sandwich begins with their chicken thigh that has been marinated in buttermilk and Louisiana hot sauce. It's then dredged in a mixture of cornstarch, cornmeal, flour, Cajun spice, and salt and pepper. It's then placed into the deep fryer for about eight minutes to cook and get so crispy. While that's frying, provolone cheese is placed onto a bun and goes into the oven to toast. Okay, so the chicken's done. And the first piece goes down, followed by the molasses mustard. The second piece, more molasses mustard, and finally finished with some pepperoncini peppers. A thing of absolute beauty. First of all, chicken thigh. Yes, so much more flavor. So much just like juicier than chicken breast. And this crunch. So, this is a bite. Chicago can get very, very cold, but the Little Meatball Pizzeria has a dish that will keep your body and your soul warm. The Little Meatball Pizzeria's meatballs is a recipe passed down generations from the family in Sicily with homemade sausage, ground beef, parsley, Romano cheese, Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, onions, and garlic. They are rolled and cooked in the pizza oven before taking a bath in their homemade marinara sauce. They are then placed onto an enormous French bread loaf, drowned in more sauce, and then a ton of mozzarella is put right on top. It's placed into the oven to get all ooey gooey and finished with some Italian herbs before I dig right in. The meatballs, packed with flavor, perfect texture. I mean, look at this thing. It's the size of a baby, it's crazy. Mmm. I think most of it got in my mouth. <laughs> in a city full of insane burgers, this one might be the best. Let me tell you why. Mini Mott in the Time Out Market is keeping it simple with their menu, but not with this burger. Stacked on this bad boy is a double patty with sweet potato frizzles, poison aioli, pickled jalapeno, pickles, miso, butter, onions, and American cheese all on a Hawaiian bun. That's insane. There was so much going on in there of textures, and flavors, and nothing coming in between each other, all perfectly complementing each other. Oh my God, tons of crunch when I sweet potato frizzle right in the middle. And then a Hawaiian roll, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of heat from those pickled jalapenos, and then just like pure umami, fattiness, goodness of the burger, the American cheese, and here it is, it's the miso butter onions. Jeez. And a hoisin aioli on top also, like, this burger's crazy. Crinkle fries also. Mmm. Happy. This Filipino breakfast sandwich was my favorite bite in Chicago. Kasama is a Filipino bakery and restaurant in Chicago's East Ukrainian village that not only has insane pastries like this horchata bun, but one hell of a breakfast sandwich. You have a few options, but here's the order. Souffleed egg, American cheese, and hash brown. And if you want an extra kick, get the longanisa to add a little garlicky sweetness to every bite. 
This is so simple and so delicious. Listen, Martin's potato bun, key, American cheese, key, hash brown, all that texture in the middle, and then it's souffle egg. Just like this nice creaminess, airiness in the middle of the whole thing. This is what you want in a breakfast sandwich. Texture, creaminess, saltiness, a little bit of sweetness from that potato bun. Dude, I could house a few of these. Mm. Every time I'm in Chicago, I'm eating this pita and lamb hummus. I dream about it. It all begins with Bernie's Lunch and Supper's thick but creamy perfect hummus made with roasted jalapenos. It's then topped with their lamb, which is made with a gram masala, onions, garlic, tomatoes, and oil. A take on the traditional lamb hashwi, which is usually served with rice. It's then all about their pita, which uses a poolish sourdough-like starter, which is then worked into a dough, proofed, rolled out again, and brushed with clarified butter before cooking in their wood-fired oven. What you get is a pita that's almost like an Indian-like parada. My absolute just favorite. Oh, oh, it's so perfect. That hummus is so creamy. And they're getting like that nice like crunch on the outside of the pita, but a nice tear on the inside. Great contrast in textures that I absolutely love. And lamb itself, it's just packed with flavor. I mean, it feels like it's a stew. All those in spices and ingredients that was concentrated in it. I, there's, I've never had anything like this. It makes me so happy. I missed it last time I was in Chicago and I was so mad at myself. And it had to be my only bite here.